Wow, it is hotter than a Cajun crawfish out here today. I'm sure glad for this giant oak tree behind me to give me a little bit of shade from that hot sun. Hello, my name is Tom Lentz and I'm a Wisconsin master naturalist. Welcome to nature around the corner. Today I'm at 4-H Camp Riverside in southern Sheboygan County and we're going to be talking about the trees of Wisconsin. So let's just climb right into our subject. Trees fall into two basic categories. Here at Camp Riverside we have both. The first is the deciduous tree or the leaf bearing trees and these include the oaks, the maples, cherries, hickory nuts, and any other tree that bears leaves. Now come fall, these trees will lose their leaves. The second kind of tree that we have in Wisconsin is the coniferous or the needle bearing trees such as what's right behind me. These trees include the spruce, the pines, and the cedars. Unlike the deciduous trees, with the exception of the tamarack spruce, these trees will not lose their leaves during the winter. Have you ever thought about how many things actually come from a tree? Take a look around your house and see how many things you can come up with in 15 seconds. Ready, set, go. How many items from around your house made from trees did you come up with? You use products made from trees every day. Many of these things you would never guess came from a tree. As a matter of fact, when you consider the thousands of products made from trees, all parts of the tree is used and nothing gets wasted. Did you ever notice how clean and fresh the air is in the forest? Not only do trees filter out the pollutants from the air, but one mature tree will produce enough oxygen in one season as 10 people breathe in an entire year. Now isn't that an amazing tree fact? In our previous video on the wildflowers of Wisconsin, we discussed invasive species. Invasive species are simply non-native plants, animals, or insects that compete for space and nutrients with our native ones. Within the woodlands of Wisconsin, there are some threats that are lurking amongst our trees. Some of these include, but are not limited to, the European Gypsy Moth, which originally comes from Eurasia. It is one of the most destructive pests of hardwood forests in the United States. It is listed as one of the 100 most destructive species worldwide. The elm bark beetle is originally native to Asia. This beetle has devastated native populations of elm trees that did not have a resistance to the disease. It spreads the disease via a fungus. Oak wilt is also caused by a fungus. The fungus invades areas inside a tree where water moves. Bumps plug up the water's path through the trees, eventually causing the leaves to wilt and fall off the tree. It is spread underground through the tree's roots and over land by beetles. The beech bark beetle feeds on the bark of the beech tree, spreading a fungus called beech bark disease. The fungus cuts off key nutrients to the tree. 
Because a beetle is so small, it is easily carried from tree to tree by birds and other animals. The pine borer beetle affects the inner bark of the pine tree's branches, twigs, and trunks. The beetles cause pine sap to flow, which allows vital nutrients and moisture to leave the tree. This eventually causes the tree to die. The black walnut twig beetle has been associated with the widespread mortality of black walnut trees in the western United States and is knocking on the door in Wisconsin. It spreads a fungus called thousand canker disease that can kill an infected tree. Finally, the invasive most of us are familiar with is the emerald ash borer or EAB. It is by far the most destructive invasive species in Wisconsin. The EAB has destroyed much of the ash population in Wisconsin. The insect is about the size of a penny and is characterized by its emerald green color. Estimates in Wisconsin include the loss of over 770 million ash trees. While many of these diseases are carried from tree to tree by animals, insects, and birds, we can all do our part in controlling the spread of these tree diseases and invasives by simply cleaning your utensils that are used to cut and trim trees before you leave an area, and most importantly, by not moving firewood and leaving it in your campsite. I have a really cool and awesome activity for us today. Did you know that you can guesstimate the age of a tree without cutting it down? Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But before we get to that, I need to tell you a little bit about this massive bur oak that I'm standing in front of. Oak trees used to dominate the forests of Wisconsin, and this particular bur oak may be a remnant of the old oak savanna. So let's see how old this tree may be. To guesstimate the age of a tree, we will need a tree growth factor. Tree growth factors are numbers assigned to trees according to how fast or slow a tree grows. The lower the number, the faster the growth rate. The higher the number, the slower the growth rate. These numbers can be obtained by Googling tree growth factors. More info can also be found on page 10 of the Nine and Up Wisconsin Explorer Solving Mysteries book, which can be downloaded for free. In the case of our bur oak, it is in the white oak family and has a growth rate factor of five. To begin, we will need some simple tools, a tree field guide to help us identify the tree, a measuring tape to measure the tree's circumference. And here I prefer a cloth style carpenter's tape. It's just easier to handle. And finally, a pencil and a paper. First, we will need to measure the circumference. To do this, measure four and a half feet up from the stump or the base of the tree. Next, Measure around the outside of the tree. This is your circumference. In the case of the bur oak, it has a whopping 11 foot 7 inch circumference or 139 inches. Next, we need to figure out the diameter. This is achieved by dividing the circumference by 3. The bur oak has a diameter of 46.3 inches. Finally, we take our tree growth factor of 5 
and multiply that by our diameter of 46.3 inches. The guesstimate age of our bur oak is 232 years old. Imagine the history this tree has seen. For you history buffs, research back to find out what life was like when this tree first began to grow. Isn't that a really cool and awesome project? Now we need to remember when doing the tree growth factor method for guesstimating the age of a tree, that there are many factors that go into its growth. Competition for food, water, for nutrients, for sunlight, all affect the growth rate of a tree. Thank you for watching today's video on the trees of Wisconsin. I hope you see how important it is to wisely use and protect this precious resource of ours. You know, whether you live in the city or you live in the country, trees play a very, very important part in our lives. Now, if you will excuse me, I am just going to take it easy in the shade for a while, pull up a cold drink, and catch a little shut-eye. This has been Tom Lentz with Nature Around the Corner.